Hi, friends. Nice to see you all this morning. And uh, I know we're a couple of minutes early, uh, but let's uh, listen to a wonderful psalm. I want to read Psalm 24 uh, to you this morning before we have our opening hymn, the 24th Psalm. And it says, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And Selah means, think about that. So there's two good reasons why we should think about what we have read, because it appears twice in the psalm. And I read those verses because in the latter part of the psalm, who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. The Lord mighty in battle, he is the King of glory. And praise God. And we're going to sing our opening hymn. It's number 187 in Redemption Hymnal, if you're using the book. And it is, Look ye saints, the sight is glorious. See the man of sorrows now. From the fight return victorious. Every knee to him shall bow. Crown him, crown him. Crowns become the victor's brow. And this is, of course, a wonderful outworking of Psalm 24, especially those final verses. Now, we should be able to sing from our hearts. Let's rise if you're able to stand. Let's do so. Let me sing. the trophies Jesus brings. 
And today we are trophies of his wonderful, glorious triumph at the cross. And over the resurrection morning, we sing, Rich the trophies Jesus brings in the seat of power enthrone him while the vault of heaven rings. Okay, verse 2. seated. Now let's come to the Lord in prayer together as we unite our hearts in his presence and in his house. Our loving Lord Jesus and wonderful Savior, we praise and thank thee this day for these great words that we've been singing. And we remember that thy word says he was made a little lower than the angels for suffering of death, But we see Jesus now crowned with glory and honor. And we're glad today, Lord, for a Savior who has descended, who is lifted up between heaven and earth, but today is highly exalted. And we give thee praise, Lord, this morning that thy passion is past, thy sufferings are over, thy work is complete, thy redemption is secured, and we give thee praise, Lord, this morning that in many of our hearts it is secured as an abiding blessing. And we can say today, I know in whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And today, Lord, we're thankful that we have a Savior who is now seated at thy right hand. Our Father, we thank thee for him who pleads our cause, who presents our case, our great high priest, and who is touched with the feeling of our infirmities, was in all points tempted like as we are, and because of it is able to help those who are tempted and knows our every need and sympathizes in every tear. And so, Lord, we pray this day that as thou dost bend low to hear our cry and to attend to our needs, so thou dost present our needs at the Father's throne. And here we are today, Lord, upheld by the grace of God and kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together again today. I give thee praise, Lord, for thy sparing mercies on our lives, even since we met last Lord's Day. God is good, and God is good all the time. Praise God. Thank you this morning for each home and each family circle that's represented in the house of God. Bless each man and woman who is gathered with us this morning. Bless each family that they represent. Be with our loved ones today. Some may be near, some may be far away, some are abroad, some are in other countries. Uh, Lord, continents away, and we pray that wherever they are today, thy gracious hand will be upon them for the glory of the name of Jesus. Thank you for each other today, dear Lord. And now we come, dear Father, this morning to bring before you the needs of people that we know, and people, yes, Lord, that we're not aware of, but they are in deep need today. We commend them to thy grace and pray for the ministry of the Spirit of God. Some may be grieving, some are bereaved. We pray that the Comforter will come and comfort them in their sorrow today, those family circles. We pray this day, Lord, for those Uh, who are serving in foreign fields, missionaries and representatives of the cross of Jesus Christ. God bless them today. We pray for many of our friends who are serving thee this morning in the west of Ireland at Crow Patrick on this day of pilgrimage. We pray that many Roman Catholic people will not only hear the glad tidings of salvation in Jesus, but that there will be some who will come to Jesus Christ. 
bless those that we know of, Oliver McAllister and Trevor Boyd and the team. God bless them today, Lord. And we pray that thy hand will be upon all those who serve thee in this special day, the last Lord's Day of July. We pray, dear Savior, that they may know much help and much blessing and much joy as they return home after this day of ministry. O Lord, bless thy word throughout our land today. Be glorified in our nation. Move by the Spirit of God. Touch many hearts today. And we pray for thy gracious overhand, overleading, overriding, Lord, and overruling in all the issues and affairs of our nation these days. Come to us as a nation, we pray, and turn our hearts again, Lord, to seek thy face and call upon thy name. Bless the pastor today and his wife and family, Lord, and bring them safely back to their congregation and people and be with them in the days and in the season that lies ahead. Be with the boys and girls that are touched through lifeliners and Sunday school in the months that lie ahead. Make it a very fruitful time and be in the midst with all those who are serving thee in vacation Bible schools and summer holiday camps for young people. Make it a fruitful time. And Lord, we shall give to thee the praise and the glory. We pray these things today now in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our wonderful Savior and Lord. Amen and amen. Now, it's really good to be amongst you today, and we're glad to be back. Yvonne's glad to be back with me again today, but it's nice to see you, Anne. And Sam back again, looking fresh and well after their little break, and we praise God for his goodness to us all. We're going to sing another hymn, and then, is you, Sam, today? Yes, it is. Sam is going to give us some announcements after this hymn. It's number 378 in the book, and it is, My Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. 378 in the book. Now, this is a good hymn, and I know you can sing it well. Amen.
men. Somebody said one time, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other rocks are shamrocks. <laughs> it's good to be on the rock. You know, two Freemasons, two men met, and one said, are you on the square? You know, that's what they ask each other. And man says, nobody says, I'm on the rock. Amen. Good to be on the rock. Now it's good to have Sam, and we're going to have Brother Sam to give us some announcements together. Thank you, Sam. Thank you again, Sam. Thank you for the warm words of welcome. We have always felt very welcome at Balamina, and we enjoy being among you all, and we pray the Lord will continue to bless you and the drive-ins that are planned for the coming month. Uh, they are a great source of outreach that uh, extends beyond the walls of the building. And we thank God for that. I was uh, telling you a little bit last week about uh, the drive-ins of the years that we did them at Port Rush and up until 2018. Uh, the last one for this year that we're putting up now on our Glad Tidings Hour went up last night at 7 o'clock. And it actually was the very last drive-in at Port Rush on that date, the 5th of August, uh, I think it was 2018. We didn't know that it would be the last one of all, but circumstances have led that way because of all the intervening uh, events since 2018. But I was looking this morning just before leaving for church, and I noticed that it had already uh, clocked up 600, and I think it was 49 to be exact, views uh, overnight. So we praise God. We went down last night for a little walk. Yvonne and I take her out for a little walk every so often, seeing we don't have a dog. Uh, I take her for a wee walk. And we just got down to the Metropole, and we're about to go through the arch, and this couple was coming along at the side. And you know, we are got to the stage now when we see anybody, we kind of smile because we're not sure if they're watching us or not. And we don't want people to go past and say, those stewards, they wouldn't talk to you, you know. But we don't know who all is watching, but this couple came forward, middle-aged couple, and said, you're the people we watch every week and glad tidings are. Oh, I said, that's really wonderful. Where do you come from? Well, they said, we come from just outside Newry, and we're up on a little holiday in Port Rush, and we've been watching you and following you on Glad Tidings Hour. And we had a lovely time of talking and fellowshipping together with them, a lovely uh, Christian couple who are on holidays. But that happens constantly. And uh, earlier this past week, uh, we had... Uh, uh, very conscious that someone had drawn up behind us as we were having a little walk one evening. And uh, we engaged the person in conversation. Turned out to be somebody from uh, some miles away from Port Rush, brought up in a Roman Catholic background, and said, you're the people who are on television. I said, well, perhaps, uh, yeah, maybe. And here was a person who has been watching us uh, on the programs as well, and a real seeking, searching lady. And we sat down on a bench together for a little while, Yvonne, myself, to converse with her, and to help her, and to speak to her, and point out to her the simple plan of salvation that is not found in all the avenues that she has been searching in. A middle-aged person almost she is now, uh, but you remember to pray for the people that we touch that we don't know about and the people that we hear about in the grapevine. So we thank God for what He is doing. We thank you for your prayers. Continue to remember us in the weeks that lie ahead. Thank you so much again, Sam, for the welcome. And I trust that you have a really special time as you do outreach uh, in this coming month. You'll never know until you get to the glory land who is touched, who is reached, who hears the word, even as they pass by. And then on that great day, we'll really discover the full fruits of all our ministry. Well, there we are. I'm going to read to you now from Second Peter chapter 3. Remember last week I was with you, and I spoke to you from Second Peter chapter 1. Well, and during the week I've been uh, thinking about the service and felt, well, why not just stay in Second Peter and uh, spend some time in it whilst we're 
thinking about it in the context of last week and maybe just following through a little more. And we'll come right on through now to the message for today rather than have any more uh, singing. So, Second Peter and chapter 3 and commencing to read at the first verse. This is actually Peter's final writings. This is his last message that he left before he went home to be with the Lord. So people say, what did he say? Did she say anything before she died? Did he say anything before he died? And maybe we treasure some statement or something that has been said. We have read about those who have served the Lord, and we've read a little bit about their final words, and what an inspiration they have been for those servants of God who have left a message. But what an inspiration that the Apostle Peter has left us God's message before he went home to be with the Lord. And so he writes to them, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us the apostles of the Lord and Saviour, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, Be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come, as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, Be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, also as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood." which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or twist, as they do also the other Scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, to Him be glory both now 
and forever. Amen. And may God bless his word to our hearts. Let's pray together. Dear loving Lord and Heavenly Father, we acknowledge today and testify that if there was nothing in our service that was inspired or inspiring, then what we have just done is what gives us inspiration and is inspired. We thank Thee that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is God-breathed. This is not just Peter's words, Lord. This is Thy Word, Thy Word, forever settled in heaven. Heaven and earth shall pass away. And we've read about that in the chapter, Lord. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Lord, we know this day that thy word will outlast and outlive that uh, fire that we've read about, that melting, that dissolution. Oh, Lord, we thank thee today that this is the rock on which our lives are built. And I pray there'll not be one man or one woman today who will not be on that rock, not be standing on that firm foundation, not be found trusting in that word. And I pray this day that the blessing of God will be upon us in these moments now as we come to meditate on thy word. I pray this, Lord, in the name of Jesus and for thy glory only, we pray. Amen and amen. Sometimes we hear people saying, we need to live with an eye to the future. And it's usually used in the context of planning ahead, living with an eye to the future. But here is a man who's living with his eye on the future. He's looking forward to this, what we've read about. And when we were reading, I said to you that this was Peter's last message to the people. And you would think that being approaching imminent death and martyrdom, which of course he had and was crucified upside down according to tradition, feeling that he could never be, uh, never be worthy to be crucified as Jesus was, he said, crucify me upside down. And Peter was uh, taken from this scene of time by a horrible death, but a glorious, victorious passing into the presence of the Lord. But instead of being focused on his imminent death, which the Lord had told him he would have, he was focused on what was beyond it. And as the people of God, our focus is not on dying, our focus is on eternity. Our focus is on what is beyond That's why death holds no terror for us. That's why it holds no sting. That's why it holds no fear. And thank God today we can look it straight in the eye and say, O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And when Peter is looking ahead, he's looking to, not as his death, as I said, but he's looking to the coming of the Lord. He's looking for the crown of life. You know, there are different crowns in the Bible, and the crown of life is reserved for those who give their lives in the service of the Lord, who became martyrs. And Peter was focused on the crown of life, the coming of the Lord, and holiness in preparation for that coming. And all of that is in that chapter that we read together. There's so much in the chapter, but we're just going to have a very cursory glance at it this morning. He speaks about being diligent. Uh, He speaks about the glorious theme of the Lord's coming, which, of course, John does as well. But Peter, maybe more particularly, applies the message and earth sit down into our everyday living. In this chapter, that is particularly borne out. And so just a very, very brief overview, if you are making any sort of note or mental note about it, the, the Advent message in the first four verses, he speaks of it about as being something that is not believed, something that is assailed. The mockers and the scoffers of the last days, says Peter, Where is the promise of his coming? 
Since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. And there have always been scoffers, but particularly today we have many who no longer believe in the existence of God. They are professed atheists. There are those who don't believe in salvation. There are those who don't believe that anything unusual is going to happen. Everything is going to continue as it is, ad infinitum, on and on and on. But Peter says, not so, because the coming of the Lord draws nigh, and things are going to be different. Not only does he speak of it as being an evidence of the last days, that there would be many scoffers, many who would mock the issues of the Bible and the coming of the Lord and all of that, but he speaks of it as something which is attested even through history because he refers back to the Old Testament Scriptures and he refers to the great deluge whenever the earth was overflowed with water, completely overflowed all around the world. Some of the highest mountains in ever in the Himalayas have got seashells in them. My friends, they were breathed, heaved up in the great deluge, and the earth's contours were completely changed after the days of Noah from what it was before. And so we know that it's true. But he says, what happened then is but an indication of what is to come in the future. And you know, we're talking a lot about global warming. We have global warming in this passage for sure. The very heavens will melt. And it's very interesting because in the original Greek in the New Testament, it says they will pass away with a crackling and a hissing noise. And even since the atomic bomb was made and the first atom was split, the hissing and the crackling that goes with the splitting of the atom is part of atomic explosion. And you know, the very atoms in the universe, God is going to split the atoms. And the hissing and the crackling that will cause a massive conflagration and cause even the elements to melt with fervent heat, as Peter speaks about, that will be our reality. And he speaks of it as something that will come like a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, as I've said to you, a crackling and a hissing, and the elements that make up our world and our universe, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Something breaking down is the original, something breaking down into its basic elements. And in chapter 3 and verse 7, he speaks of the heavens and the earth, which we are aware of, which are now, by the same word as back in the days of Noah, kept in store, are reserved unto fire. Are reserved unto fire. Against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So in the light of that, Peter says, I know that you have an assumed expectation. Because he says, seeing that ye look for such things. And when he says that, it reads like this in the Amplified Bible, since you are expecting. I hope that we are. I hope that we are living in the light of the passage that I've read. I hope that we are living with our eyes on the future. The things which are seen are temporal. The things which are not seen are eternal. And we need to have our eyes fixed on what is not seen to the naked eye, but visible to the eye of faith. The dissolution of all things. It motivates me to look beyond, like it does Peter. And what does he look beyond for? It's recorded in verse 13 of the passage. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, Look for a new heaven or new heavens, the new heavens of glory, a new earth or a new earth of grandeur, and a new dominion, a dominion of righteousness. So he says we're looking for new heavens, 
We're looking for a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Now, we're in church this morning. We're a small group of people by, uh, relative to the world and the world's standards. But we're part of a great family, my dear people. We are part of a great family. And we are those this morning who ascribe to the Bible and to righteousness. But there's a world out there that has no subscription to righteousness. It didn't look like a very righteous place yesterday in Belfast. But you know what it tells me? It tells me like as Jesus said, In the days of Lot, as it was, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And what were the conditions of Sodom and Gomorrah? The conditions that we see being played out in so many cities across our nation on special days. But instead of seeing what we see with the naked eye and being despairing, we see with the eye of faith And our anticipation mounts up because God says, as it was, so shall it be. And what happened? The judgment came, but in our situation, it's a foretaste of the coming of the Lord Jesus. And it's a foretaste of a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Isn't that wonderful? What a glorious, wonderful earth when the new earth and the new heavens are created, and righteousness prevails from pole to pole and right around the globe, whatever shape or whatever form it takes in that great event of the future. My friends today, an an assumed expectation, I put a little thing in my note. Peter says, you are looking. He says, you are living in anticipation. And my question is, is that true of you today? If Jesus were to come today, if the trumpet were to sound today, if the rapture of the saints were to take place today, would you be left behind? Or would you go with those who are saved to be with Christ? And then after that, and when the judgment day comes, and the worlds are on fire, My friends, to be with him and safe in him is something that money can't buy and fame can't purchase. Thank God today for an assumed expectation. Then there is in verse 14, B, part, second part of the verse, uh, he says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Last Sunday, I mentioned to you how Peter uses this word diligent and how he he emphasizes being diligent. It means focusing your mind. It means focusing your thoughts, setting your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Be diligent. Old Dr. Godby said, hasten to be found spotless and blameless unto him in peace. My dear people, that vivid and constant outlook is the grandest conceivable inspiration to a holy experience and life. This is what Dr. Godby goes on to say. This vivid and constant outlook is the grandest conceivable inspiration to a holy experience and life get wholly sanctified by the precious blood and the consuming fire of the Holy Ghost. This is the only way to be found spotless and blameless. When he comes, I want to be found in that frame. I want to be found in that context of life, spotless and blameless. We often sing the hymn, When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white, pure and white in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansions bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? You're saying, Eric, I feel an uncleanness in my heart. 
I feel I am not ready if Jesus were to come today. Oh, how can I be ready? Time is not on my side. And the day tells me that the day of his coming is near. He said, when you see these things, look up, look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. He is nigh even at the door. Even at the door. So, my people, are we waiting and ready? Waiting for the bridegroom's coming, our lamps burning bright, garments white, and when the cry goes up, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Out we go to meet him. Amen? I trust so. I describe preparation. It's the heart of Paul's supplication when he writes in his epistles as well. And it's constantly uh, united in his message uh, of the coming of the Lord and having a clean heart and a spirit-filled life. Because right through the book of Thessalonians, every chapter has some reference to the Lord's return. And of course, in every chapter, there is a reference to walking in holiness of heart and sanctity of life in Paul's letter to the church at Thessalonica. And if it was so then, how much more even now? And I say, why not covenant with God, our Maker, and Christ, our Sanctifier, to be cleansed and purified and filled with the Holy Ghost as we watch for the bridegroom's arrival? Now, there's something else in this lovely chapter that I want you to notice as we think about it. He uses the word beloved four times, and that's really nice. Uh, Sam said when he was making the announcements how glad they are to have us that come at times and help out, and I'm always happy to do that. In fact, whenever a pastor came in the early hours of the morning, three, four o'clock in the morning, many years ago to our home, in deep concern of his soul. And we knelt down at the settee and I prayed with him and pointed him to the Lord Jesus. And a little later, he got the blessed assurance of salvation. He was my spiritual child in a sense. And so I've always followed his life. And that's, of course, nice that he's now here with you to to serve and minister. And we look at these boys that grew up under us and see them in the service of God. Joseph Kennaway today, way preaching and ministering now, working down there in Ballybean Estate and the Big Estate. And we're going to be with them there later this year for a short harvest mission. My dear friends, it's really exciting to see them grow up and get out into the service of the Lord. And why, what joy that brings to our hearts. But you know, he also says here, beloved, beloved. And we love these boys in the Lord as they serve him and all those who are serving the Lord. But he says in verse 4, verse 2 actually, beloved, be mindful of the words which were spoken by the holy prophets. Don't neglect the Old Testament scriptures. There's a lot in them too for us. And I read through this book every year, once every year, right through from cover to cover, and I've done that now for more years than I can remember. And so it's really written into my heart now. And when Yvonne begins to read the Scriptures, or I begin to read, both of us probably know what's coming next because so much of it is already into our hearts. We can finish off verses just all the time when we're reading, and especially in daily light, which we use day by day. Beloved, be mindful of that which was written by and spoken by the holy prophets. Then again he says, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Be mindful, be not ignorant, be loved, be diligent. I've mentioned that already. And then, beloved, beware. Verse 17, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. You know, Peter loved the people that he was writing to. Peter had a heart for these people. And we have a heart for you. And if you weren't loved by us, we wouldn't serve you as we do. (laughs) But because we love you in the Lord, 
and we feel for you, and we pray for you, and we serve you, and that's what a pastor does. He prays for his people. He works amongst them. He visits them. He takes on their burdens. He's with them in their joys. He's with them in their sorrows. They become written into his heart, and we can verily call you beloved. And we say, beloved, be mindful of the things that are in the book. Beloved, be diligent. Beloved, be not unaware. Be informed. Beloved, beware, lest you fall away. Oh, my dear people, how sad to be in that condition. Beloved, beware, lest ye, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. And that's the last little thought that I have for you as we come near the end of the message today. Here is a dangerous declension. There's an assumed expectation, seeing that ye look for these things. Have you got that expectation? Then there is a described preparation. See that you be spotless and blameless. Be found blameless and harmless. That was it, yes. Be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. That's a described preparation. And the best preparation for the coming of the Lord is to have a clean heart, a spirit-filled life, a torch that's burning, and a heart that's waiting in avid preparation for his coming. And then this other warning. This is Peter's final words. He's concerned. Because he knows that all around them is temptation. He knows that all around them there is the danger of slipping and falling and drifting off. How many there are like that? We've met them in life. How many there are like that? So, you know, Pastor Eric, I used to be once bright. I used to pray. I used to read the Bible. I used to be at prayer meetings. I used to, I used to be involved in the Lord's work, but... I'm not anymore. Not anymore. They might not all say all that, but then there's others, and you know that that's what has happened to them. And they have slid away off. And why, my dear friends, that's one of the marks of the end times. Many shall fall away. Many shall drift away. Why? The pressures and the atmosphere that's all around us. Is that what has happened to you perhaps today? Say, oh, I'd like to be back. Oh, take me back. Let me walk down the old paths again. Let me come back to my first love. Let me come back into vital union with Jesus, into a vital relationship with the Lord. Would you like to do that today? Would you like to be back and you're ready and watching and waiting? And then when he comes, oh, ready, gone to be with him. Are you ready? Are you watching? Or has that declension settled in? I say here, it's not how we commence the race, my friends. It's how we finish. That's what matters. It's not the start out. Some start out off with a great burst and then just wane off and peter out and finish way down the line. My, the Lord wants us to be at our post. He wants us to be well ready. Peter says, beware. And he also says, Paul says, let him that thinketh he standeth. Take heed lest he fall. Used to be a hymn we used to sing it quite often. Many are leaving the highways, trod by our fathers of old, turning aside into byways, letting their ardor grow cold. O Lord, send us revival. Let it begin now in me, gladly dethroning each rival. Yield I my heart unto thee. Take me back. Oh, take me back. My heart cries out for thee. My dear folks today, as we get nearer to the Lord's return, Peter's last words are these. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. I would love today that whenever that day comes, that we might all be growing in grace, walking in the light as he is in the light, having fellowship with him all along the line. Are you ready? 
will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright and be washed and robed and ready for the coming of the Lord. Let's bow together in a moment of prayer. Our loving Lord Jesus this morning, now just gone the afternoon, dear Lord, we pray and ask that as we have thought upon the near return of our Savior, I pray, Lord Jesus, that there will be utmost preparation for the coming of the bridegroom. Yes, Lord, if it was our wedding day and so many of us look back and we think of the preparations that we made for such an event, or we maybe were part of a family in a wedding and we knew that there was a lot of preparation going on. Yes, Lord, and when the day came, everybody was filled with eager anticipation for the meeting of the bride and the bridegroom. O oh Lord, I pray this day that as the grandest meeting that is ever will take place is about to take place, when the bride will meet the bridegroom of glory, O oh Lord, we pray that the preparation will be well made. Nothing will be left to chance. Nothing will be left to chance, Lord, but every item will be taken care of, every base covered, Lord, every issue settled, all business settled, and every soul ready for the Lord's return. Oh, dear Jesus, help us, we pray, and as outside gets darker, Lord, and sin gets more rampant and more vibrant and more vocal. Lord, we pray that as thy people we will get more earnest and more eager in our anticipation of the coming of the Lord. And I pray that no one will be missing from Balamina Church, Lord, from Balamina Congregation, even this morning, Lord. And, oh God, I pray that many people from Balamina Town who are still strangers to the grace of God, will come into the family and fold of the Lord, even through the drive-in services, dear Lord, in the month of August. God bless this little message today, and be with us and help us, Lord, and we'll give to thee all the praise and the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to sing a lovely hymn. It's number 762, 762 in the book. And it is, Sing we the King, who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation, his empire shall bring joy to the nations when Jesus is King. 762. victorious hymn and let's rise if you're able to stand that is
Dear Lord, we thank you. We started off singing, Crown him, crown him, crown the Savior, King of Kings. We finish, Lord, with singing, crown him, and praise God today that on the head of our Savior there are many crowns. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, today we follow the crowned Lamb. Praise God, and I pray today that we might enjoy the triumph of His grace in every single life, Lord. And if there are some who are languishing in death or darkness and sin, Lord, we pray that Thy Holy Spirit will birth them into life and into the kingdom of God and draw back any who may have lost out along the way, Lord. And help us all to be on tiptoe, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness and lost in His love. Now part us in the fear and favor of our blessed Lord and be with us this afternoon and watch between us, Lord, until we meet again in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen.